Good morning, uh, good afternoon, and welcome to New Beginnings House of Worship as we come once again with our moment in the word uh, here this second Saturday in the year 2022. And so uh, we want to just give a uh, shout out of praise to God for all that he's done. We've had snow here in Nashville and um, this uh, general area in Tennessee, Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky and there are other areas who've had snow. And uh, so it's been sort of a, a relaxed uh, moment. But even in the midst of snow, some people like the snow, some don't. Uh, God is still good and we can see his amazing glory in all that his creation provides us. And so we want to welcome you into this moment in the word. And we've been dealing with our theme entitled, What I Can Do in 2022. And it's based on the uh, scripture from Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So on last week, we uh, sort of gave you an introduction into this uh, topic. Uh, and so we're going to continue with I can do all things. And so today's lesson, we want to encourage you to get your word out and just for this moment. And we're going to cover uh, Isaiah 53 verses 4 through 6. Isaiah 53 verses four through six. And so as we look into God's word, God's word says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Glory. Verse 6 says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him, Jesus Christ, the iniquity of us all. Amen. And so when we look into this and think on this topic, uh, what I can do in 2022, um, there are a lot of things that affect us in life. And uh, there are situations that we go through uh, that we want to deal with. Uh, and we try to figure a way out of it. Uh, we may have gone through situations where maybe we were uh, on drugs, or maybe uh, we not only were on drugs, at one point we were selling drugs, and then we became a drug user, and the world has convinced us that there's no hope left in us, that we're no good. Uh, uh, the, our sins of the past, we've not only being a drug user, but we affected the lives of many others and caused them to be drug users. Maybe uh, we lied a lot. Uh, we were trying to get a lot of friends and we, we would gossip here and gossip there and we, uh, the gossiping and the lies that we got us in some trouble with our friends and nobody wants to deal with us anymore. And people are just gonna call you a gossip and a lie all your life. Somebody may be dealing with sexual is issues and, and you maybe you've been uh, out uh, giving yourself away to anybody, uh, whether you're male or female, uh, just having sex with anybody and at any time, and now people calling you all those names that come along with it. And the evil one is gonna try to convince you that you're no good, you're not loved, and you are still that kind of person. Well, the first thing that we wanna deal with uh, in this lesson, we gave you the introduction last week into it, we wanna deal with acceptance. Uh, one of the things that we, we find out is that a lot of time young people uh, that are coming into the church, that have been in the church, uh, they're, they're falling away from the church because we're constantly telling them all the things that they've done wrong. Nobody's trying to tell them how to do things to get over it. And I, I say no one. Um, yes, there are those churches out there that are, are teaching and preaching the truth of God's word. And so today we're trying to give you some hope give you some lessons on things you can do. Uh, you already know what, what, what has uh, afflicted you in your life. Uh, we can't shy away from those things. We, we know those things. So the first thing that we want to deal with is acceptance. And, and there are two types of acceptance that we want to deal with here. First of all, accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I know you said, okay, okay, preacher, here you go again. Here you go. Uh, yes, uh, because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And it's important to know and accept that what Christ offers to us. And that's what we want to show you here in this lesson today. Not only acceptance of Christ or accepting Christ, but when you accept Christ, you also accept the restoration that he offers. 
and we need to be restored. Uh, there's a lot of people that have gone through situations, no matter what it is. You you know your situation. I don't have to try to list them all, but you've been, you've gone through some hard times, some difficulties, and life keeps throwing you curveball. The evil one is constantly trying to get you to think that you are that person, and that's not all you will ever be. Well, I want to show you here in this Isaiah text that what God has to offer for you, and we have to be able to accept Christ and accept the gift of restoration that he offers to everyone, no matter how sinful you may have been. Look at what it says, and, and I really would like to go and deal with verse three, but we, we're gonna go start here at verse four. It says, surely he, who are we talking about he? Jesus Christ. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. These are the things that we have done. We have done some things that weren't right, we have done some things and we continue to do some things that just aren't right in our life. And Jesus Christ is going to bear all of those things that we've done. He's going to carry it in his body. He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet, what did we do? We esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. The world tells you that this Jesus Christ, you can't live a life like that. Uh, the world will walk all over you. They'll beat you. They'll kill you. They just like they did Jesus uh, in His day. Uh, they, they, the even the church, uh, even those church leaders of the day, uh, the, the scribes, the Pharisees, they, they came out against Jesus because He was upsetting the situation at hand. Jesus will upset things in your life, in the world, and even in your life to get you to come around to see the gift that he's offering all of us. And so here we find that we, even though at some point in our life we did not accept Jesus Christ, we thought that this Jesus thing was a weak thing. He was beaten, he was smitten, he was, he, he was, he, he, he's just not the one. He, he can't be the one to bring uh, uh, anything of happiness and joy and strength and power that we're looking for. But look at what it says. Uh, he was wounded See, here, this whole thing about him being smitten and stricken uh, and we thinking him, him being weak. No, this is what he did. He took the wounds for us. He was wounded, what? For our transgressions. The things we've done. All those things that you, whatever you've done in life, don't allow the evil one to tell you you're not forgiven because Jesus take the pain and the punishment for all those things that you've done to, so that you can be restored to Jesus Christ. I mean, to, to God our Father, uh, through Jesus Christ. And so he was wounded for our transgressions, all the things that we may have done of wrong, lying on other people, uh, backstabbing people, uh, the drug use and the selling of drugs, uh, prostitution, the prostitution, the, the whoremongering that we may have all been involved in and at some point of our own life, whatever that situation is, those transgressions that we had, Jesus took the wounds for us. Not only that, but he was bruised, he was afflicted for us. Why? For our iniquities, the wrong that we've done. Jesus took that on for you. So don't allow the evil one to convince you that you are not uh, a child of God, that God doesn't love you. There's no way that you can get your life together because Jesus took that to the cross for all of us. It says the chastisement of our peace, the peace that we, we should have had uh, that was being uh, abused and, and now we, we don't have any peace. And all of that is put on him. Uh, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And guess what? With his stripes, the affliction, the beating, the wounds that he's taken, with his stripes, we are healed. Because he took all of that on himself. And that's why it's so important for us to accept Jesus Christ and the gift of his restoration. We can't get around that because we can't do anything because we don't have the strength of Jesus Christ. But when we accept him as our Lord and Savior, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So you're trying to get your life together. You're trying to, to, to mobilize yourself and, and, and get out of the slump that you're in, get out of the heaviness, the funk that you're in. And we're looking at the Aretha Franklin story, Respect, and it was it keeps telling her that she's fighting these demons and the demons that keep coming up in her life. And, and James Cleveland was telling her, you, you're not fighting demons, you're just fighting yourself. You need to accept, you just need to come back into the church. 
get your life right. And that's what she did. And so when we look at this, it says, it goes on and says, all we, everybody, preachers, uh, teachers, uh, doctors, lawyers, uh, uh, garbage workers, sanitation workers, uh, custodians, all of us, no matter what station in life we think we're in, we've all we, like sheep, have gone astray. We've all done some things wrong. But guess what? God knew that we would, and he's providing a way of, of salvation and redemption and restoration for us all. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Aren't you tired of trying to do it yourself? I was listening to a song of James Fortune and Fire. It says, uh, I need your glory. Uh, less of me and more of you is what I need. And that's what we need in our life. And we can have that if we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Even though we've all gone astray, look what he says. And the Lord has laid on him, our Heavenly Father laid on Jesus Christ, the iniquity of us all. All the wrong that we've done is pl placed on him. And he has brought healing into our life. Yes, what can I do in 2022? I can accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I can surrender. I can stop chasing that, that pie in the sky dream that the world try to tell us that we can have. And I can accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And through his strength, not mine, I can't overthrow my demons, but he can. Uh, why? Because I have to follow his directions. And, and when I listen to his word and follow his word, then I can do that. And so acceptance is the first thing that we want you to see. We're going to give you some tools to help you overcome situations in your life that we've all faced. There's no one here that can say that we're without sin. We've all sinned and come short. But Jesus Christ took the burden of all of those things on him so that we can be restored to right relationship with our Heavenly Father. That's good news. And so next week we're going to talk about following. How do we follow? That's the next thing you have to do, from acceptance to following. And so join us next week at the same time. And we're going to continue this study on I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so we have that Philippians 4.13's text. Today's lesson, acceptance. Isaiah 53, 4 through 6. Accept Jesus Christ and accept the gift of restoration that he offers to us all. We hope to see you on tomorrow at 10 o'clock Central Standard Time as we go into our moment of our worship time uh, here at this location. And we'll also post on YouTube for anyone uh, that may have friends that don't have um, Facebook. And you can give it uh, look for us at New Beginnings HOW on uh, YouTube. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. And thank you for joining us today. God bless you.